to Libya now, where airstrikes intended to cripple Muammar Gaddafi's regime continue. An international coalition that includes Canada is enforcing a no-fly zone. The coalition is pummeling Libyan military targets, but Gaddafi is vowing to fight on. His forces are still on the attack, particularly in the three communities you see there in yellow. Today, they shelled Misrata to wrestle it out of rebel hands. Reports say at least 40 people have been killed, including children. And Gaddafi is firmly in control of four other places you see right there in green, including the capital. The rebels are holding on to Benghazi and Tobruk. No one died in this incident, but it was a setback for the coalition. A U.S. fighter jet crashed. The military says mechanical failure, not anti-aircraft fire, is to blame. The crew ejected and was rescued. And the first Arab nation joined the international effort today. Two fighter jets from Qatar arrived at a base in Crete. One deployed to Libya shortly after. Canadian fighter jets were part of the air offensive over Libya today, but despite having a plan of attack, they didn't strike. Why not? Jean-Francois Belanger is at the coalition command base in Italy, and he's got the answer. Back to base, safely. But for a second day in a row, Canadian fighter jets came back from their mission over Libya without firing a single shot. The pilots decided not to strike the ground targets they were assigned, thinking the risk for collateral damage was too high, despite their high-precision laser-guided bombs. After all, the operation's goal is to protect civilians. That's what Lieutenant Colonel Sylvain Minard kept in mind when he flew the first Canadian mission over Libya. That and the reports he's seen on TV about what Gaddafi did to his own people. Uh, we are really proud and uh, really proud and really motivated to be part of this role. Obviously, uh, we are here to defend. Uh, we are here to defend Canada's uh, moral values and ethical values. You know, human rights, democracy. Uh. This is the first time CF-18s have been sent on a combat mission abroad since Kosovo in 1999. To my knowledge, it's, uh, it's the first one that we deployed that rapidly from the time that we have the go and we're in situ and that we actually can do operations uh, very quickly. Uh, the way we have demonstrated is the first time that it, that it does happen. Fighter jets are operating under international command alongside American, British and French planes. The crash of an American F-15 earlier in the day serves as a clear reminder of just how dangerous the mission is. While we can't eliminate risk in operations such as this completely, uh, I have great confidence and faith in Canadian pilots who are highly trained, practice professionals who understand this mission and understand the risks involved. The fighter pilots and the other members of the Canadian forces have deployed in a record time here, yet they have no idea for how long they're going to be in Italy. Their mission, just like the UN resolution, has a clear beginning, but no end in sight. Jean-François Bélanger, CBC News, at the Trapani Air Force Base in Sicily. And we've got our eye on what's going on in the rest of the region as well. In Yemen, the embattled president moved up his deadline for when he would step down. He said he'd give up power by the end of the year instead of 2013. But the opposition wants him gone now. Some of his key supporters, including a top military commander, have turned against him. That's why these protesters cheered on the army today. Much of Yemen's military is now on their side. And in Egypt, a fire broke out at the Interior Ministry. Thousands of police officers were protesting outside before it happened. In demonstrations last month, police had set fire to the same building. <laughs> 